Uh, today we are going to talk about antimicrobial resistance and especially the topic of discussion will be on sepsis. Uh, so along with me today is our respected Dr. Abdul Ansari sir, Director Critical Care, Nanauti Max Super Speciality Hospital, Mumbai. Thank you sir for coming today. Really appreciate your time. Thank you Pankaj. This is my pleasure uh, of being invited over here. And I think one of the most important areas of discussion today would be antimicrobial resistance and what we can do as clinicians to contribute in the care of sepsis and uh, the awareness. Very true. Uh, if we look at the uh, sepsis incidence world over, more than uh, 50 million uh, patients are suffering with sepsis and out of which 40% are children. And as per the uh, AMR Industrial Alliance, uh, 5 million patients have a high mortality because of sepsis. So when we are trying to look at sepsis, it's one of the dreaded uh, conditions which the patient suffers. And there has been a lot of changes with the sepsis guidelines as well. Say from 1991, the SERS came into action. Then 2001, the organ dysfunction was taken into consideration. And 2016, now it is a dysregulated hormonal response, immune response has been taken into consideration. So based on these changes with the sepsis guidelines has been making, uh, how has it really changed the overall treatment modality uh, when you are treating with patients? How do you see that sepsis uh, guidelines are now uh, being taken for uh, treating sepsis? Thank you, Pankaj, for articulating this. Uh, as we all are aware that over the past three decades, the definition of sepsis has evolved. And the evolution is basically about understanding the, the response of the host. And this is very important. When we talk about life-threatening organ dysfunction in a dysregulated host response, in response to an infection. So these three uh, parts of the triad where we are talking about an infecting organism which is responsible for a plethora of you know worsening organ functions. This is very important. Just having fever, fast heart rate, uh, a little bit of sweating, shivering may not amount to really that life threatening organ dysfunction that we are most worried about mm -hmm. as we spoke about which is the characteristic subset of septic shock right. and more importantly over the last uh, 10 years what we have realized is that the host response is very important. Mm -hmm. Even if you are healthy because of certain reasons, risk factors, modifiable, non-modifiable risk factor, the host may not respond appropriately to the infectious uh, agent. Okay. And there could be a plethora of cascading effect where multiple organs fail in such a quick suspicion, uh, 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 such a quick, uh, you know, kind of order that things go out of hand very quickly and the mortality kind of increases with every passing hour. And that's why identifying the subset of septic shock mm -hmm. on a timely manner is very, very important. Right. So the definition now incorporates life-threatening organ dysfunction along with a dysregulated host response in response to an infectious agent. So this could be a viral, fungal, bacterial infection mm -hmm. and the host may have multiple factors of immunosuppression, immunocompromised state. He mm -hmm. could be a diabetic or immunocompromised or post-renal transplant patient right. or somebody who has been struggling with malnutrition mm -hmm. and life-threatening organ dysfunction among the five major organs, brain, heart, lung, liver kidney and obviously the blood parameters they define the extent of injury to the organs perfect so as we as we move ahead as you said that there's a lot of factors which are contributing uh, for causing sepsis uh, but when we are trying to identify uh, sepsis that this patient has sepsis or is going to move from septic to septic shock uh, we have some biomarkers in picture uh, procalcitonin has been used widely for a selection of antibiotics or whether antibiotics should be used whether it's a bacterial infection or not or even lactate now is done but apart from these biomarkers are there any other biomarkers which you would like to stress and say okay these are also important biomarkers which take under consideration we are trying to uh, treat patients of sepsis so it's very uh, important to understand that time is very important in this and this is why the hourly bundles where initially we were talking about six hour bundle then we moved to three hour bundle and we are now talking about one hour bundles yes. and when you talk about biomarkers before that i would actually like to go back and say that the clinical suspicion Mm -hmm. of a definite or a probable source of infection mm -hmm. is very very important okay. in response to those subset of people who are either in shock or who are not in manifest shock. Okay. 
Okay. Now, if you have a subset of person who has a probable source of infection, but presents with severe hypotension, the chances of going into that cascade, worsening cascade of organ dysfunction is very high likelihood, mm -hmm. where the index of suspicion should take into account a timely empiric antimicrobial. Right. But if you are not in septic shock, mm -hmm. you are having signs of infection, you still have a time to utilize your clinical sense and biomarkers. Yes to not bombard every patient with antibiotics which is actually the fine balance mm -hmm. you need to hit hard but for those people who are the sickest mm -hmm. but at the same time use some kind of restrain mm -hmm. for starting all the antibiotics if your patient is not in shock and mm -hmm. that's where the use of clinical judgment biomarkers are very important mm -hmm. and lactate though people will call it biomarker i would say it's an integral part of understanding shock both manifest and occult shock Okay. So, any lactate value on admission more than 2 mm -hmm. is very clearly a red flag. Okay. Whether the patient is in manifest shock or no, right. this person needs to be re-evaluated every couple of hours to see whether the lactate is trending down very and good. what you are doing is really helping it. While the biomarkers like white cell count, the CRP, the procalcitonin and other fungal biomarkers like BDG galactomenon, they have their role mm -hmm. but not in the initial ticking hours. Okay. Yes. With the rise of viral infections, doing targeted biomarker or film array PCR based tests could be important okay. to pick up a pathogen in very short period of time, okay. which I would call it as a part of diagnostic stewardship. Mm -hmm. But to say that you need to define your sepsis bundles only based on biomarkers may not be right. Right. You need to look at the subset of the patient. If there is a shock, mm -hmm. biomarkers are not as important. Okay. If the patient is not in shock and you are not sure whether it is infected, non-infected, bacterial, viral, then probably the biomarkers are very important to tailor your therapy. Right. So, in one nutshell, if I can drive it to our uh, you know, listeners, okay. that you need to give a good empiric broad spectrum targeted antibiotic which covers all potential pathogens right. in septic shock within the first hour. Right. But if you don't have shock hmm. and your lactates are not trending high, okay. there is a source of infection which are not clear and the organism is not clear, use some biomarker assistance or syndromic approach okay. to find out what would be the best antimicrobial to start with. And even if you start broad, then you need to narrow it down based upon these uh, biomarkers. Fantastic. Fantastic. So as we move ahead with the uh, antimicrobial resistance, as we move ahead with the antibiotic selection, uh, how do you face the challenge of uh, antimicrobial resistance? Because when we look at the WHO uh, data, they say that there's already critical pathogens like E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, or Abom have already gone resistance to meropenem or carbapenems. Uh, how do you take these patients, uh, patients who come with sepsis? Do you consider that this patient may be having already an infection of with AMR, or how is your empirical choice of? Uh, treatment of antibiotics so uh, I think this is one of the biggest challenges in our country especially when we talk about Indian subcontinent unfortunately we have a problem of antimicrobial resistance of un uh, precedent uh, you know kind of uh, extent which even the West doesn't face yes. we are talking about carbapenem resistant pathogens even from community we are talking about MRSAs and other difficult to treat bacteria yes. coming from the community and unfortunately we ourselves are responsible for that because we don't have a great antimicrobial stewardship programs in our hospitals and even in smaller centers there are no antibiotic restrictions right unfortunately in seriously ill patients you are uh, you are forced to make those choices of starting a good broad spectrum antimicrobial cover especially if they are coming in shock mm -hmm. but the important part coming back to this is that utilizing those advanced uh, methodologies to identify the pathogen mm -hmm. and the resistance mechanisms mm -hmm. so that you have to work with your microbiology team and your allied other sciences to know that you are not over treating right. sensitive pathogens and you are not under treating the resistant pathogens True. and this would be very important and uh, uh, a lot of work has to be done on that we need to have our flora identification intra hospital infections when we talk about but community acquired infections also can be uh, notorious especially those matrices of knowing your host 
इफ ही इज इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज क्रॉनिक किडनी डिजीज पेशेंट ऑन मेंटेनेंस हिमोडायलिसिस हैड रिसीव्ड एन एंटी माइक्रोबियल इन द लास्ट नाइन्टी डेज इज डायबिटिक ऑन स्टेरॉइड एंड हैज बीन रिपीटेडली गेटिंग एडमिटेड विद अंडरलाइंग स्ट्रक्चरल लंग डिजीजेज नाउ दोज आर द वंस वेयर यू नीड टू हैव अ मेट्रिक्स टू प्रडिक्ट वेदर दे हैव अ रेजिस्टेंट इन्फेक्शन टू स्टार्ट विद बट इन द एबसेंस ऑफ सच अ थिंग गिविंग द सेम काइंड ऑफ यू नो यू नो प्रिस्क्रिप्शन फॉर अ पर्सन हु हैज कम फ्रॉम अ Uh, from an antibiotic naive population yes. who is reasonably fine mm -hmm. probably hitting it with the uh, with a plethora of antibiotics could be detrimental right. for the next patient right. right so this is where probably we need to use our uh, you know uh, intelligence and wisdom together right very true as we move ahead and we are looking at patients where you're using antibiotics empirically uh, what about those patients uh, who are renally compromised and who are already in shock or in septic shock uh, or in sepsis or organ dysfunction uh, how do you select antibiotics because most of the last resort antibiotics are known to be nephrotoxic then how do we go ahead with uh, treating such patients with aki so this would be actually so uh, uh, assuming that we have moved on to now uh, stabilizing or identifying the sickest of the individual and taking them into the icu which should be done in a very uh, quick period of time unfortunately a uh, lot of institutions find it difficult to find them in the right place and right monitoring early on okay. so i would rather suggest that prevention of organ dysfunction is the most important aspect that is you can prevent renal dysfunction from developing by appropriate fluid resuscitation on a timely basis mm -hmm. giving the correct antibiotics and looking at augmented renal clearance in the beginning mm -hmm. and later on looking at decline in renal function as a part of organ dysfunction right. looking at the kinetic gfr estimations mm -hmm. knowing that every drug that you are giving based upon their pkpd pharmacokinetic and can farm with dynamic properties you are dosing them right right and uh, most importantly uh, the most inappropriate antibiotic is not which is causing you know adverse effects but one which is not killing the desired uh, you know uh, pathogen okay so uh, an inappropriate antibiotic co uh, combination is more harmful to the organs yes. and especially kidney dysfunction than a poor dose which which is responsible so i would suggest that when the renal functions are kind of deteriorating keeping an eye not just on the urine output right. but on the delta change of the creatinine acidosis and the electrolytes mm -hmm. is important okay talking with your colleagues nephrologists to look at the dynamic dose adjustments mm -hmm. and i would still say the nephrotoxic potential of the antibiotic mm -hmm. is still less mm -hmm. than the toxicity Uh, organ toxicity of the sepsis untreated sepsis poor source control right. not getting right fluid resuscitations mm -hmm. which are usually more responsible for organ dysfunctions but still if you have a renal dysfunction which is already setting in mm -hmm. then you need to choose your antibiotics right you can't use aminoglycosides there your polymyxins can be you know kind of there are a lot of new formulations where you have right. to look for for example polymyxin e to polymyxin b switch yes. you need to look at the dosing of other drugs and synergy and probably uh, keep keep on improvising very true very true india unfortunately is known to be an hub of uh, cre kpc and multiresistance pathogens uh, there are new antibiotics coming in india and some have already come which are us fda approved uh, how do you feel uh, these antibiotics will help to uh, cater down this infection scenario in sepsis patients so okay this is the most difficult part if i if i if i can say this is the probably meat of discussion mm -hmm. cre infections are difficult to treat pathogens like acinetobacter klebsiella and pseudomonas yes is at the heart of the major challenge that all intensivists id specialists and clinicians are struggling with yes. and we don't have enough antibiotics in the pipeline unfortunately these are problems which the west doesn't face and you did mention kpcs but let me kind of correct that that in india mm -hmm. we are dealing with more of ndms mm -hmm. with like uh, you know mbl produ uh, mbl producers as well as the uh, the oxa 48 family yes and these two uh, co producers mm -hmm. have been shown to be very very resistant to the novel bl bli combinations which have been you know kind of advocated to be the answer for cres right. so in our country even there you know that we are using other antibiotic combinations yes and uh, those have been found to be you know kind of not always effective especially like acinetobacter mm -hmm. which could be really difficult to treat so understanding that you need to talk in uh, line with your microbiologist mm -hmm. really need to understand the mics of these agents Right. keep on keeping an open mind about using them and testing them yeah. uh, in vitro and using with uh, kind of uh, continuous inputs 
looking at the source of infection. Mm -hmm. So the same antibiotic which may be sensitive in vitro may not be effective for the site of infection that we talk about. For right. example, neurological infection with resistant infections may be very difficult to treat. Yes. So I think in this area, uh, a single clinician will definitely not be well poised okay. to treat them. Okay. He need to take input from other colleagues the ID specialist, pulmonologist, nephrologist and the microbiologist mm -hmm. and looking for alternative solutions mm -hmm. and I think uh, one of the indigenous solutions that we uh, know about of using uh, Selbactam, EDTA combination with other workhorse antibiotics mm -hmm. and using synergy of yeah. these BLBLI like Kazavi along with Astrionam mm -hmm. and, and, and using other kind of uh, modifications usually mm -hmm. using uh, you know tigicycline, minocycline in combination yeah. mm -hmm. and other drugs even revival of other drugs polymyxins yeah. so you need to play around with these there are only a couple of these drugs in our armamentarium yes and yeah. they need to be you know fiddled around based upon the MICs and the appropriateness and the syndromic approach true 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 I think the discussion is going fantastic. Thank you so much for your wonderful uh, uh, comments and suggestions for success. And one last million dollar question. Uh, as a uh, clinician, what are your expectations from the pharmaceutical industry and the organization in respect to the antibiotic section or the AMR section? So what do you feel that they should be doing more or, or what inputs do you require from them which would help all the clinicians internationally and in India as well? So I think internationally the amount of research on newer antibiotics is really not uh, in accordance to the to the global need for antimicrobials right. so when we talk about the research on anti-infective it is a very small portion as compared to the onco as well as the metabolic kind of research that is happening in our country we are unfortunately not having that high level of research which can really target on these difficult to treat bugs right. and even if we have we have unfortunately poor acceptance from the global medical community mm -hmm. and we have seen that in the past that whenever we have developed a new solution right. again the robust pharmacokinetic workup on them good clinical trial and getting good case registries and kind of clinical input from a lot of them and this is a dynamic edge by the time you get a solution usually it becomes redundant very true so that kind of uh, you know thought process from the industry mm -hmm. and the clinicians coming together is very important to find an india specific solution we need to really uh, uh, you know be ahead uh, on understanding the resistance uh, you know potential in our country in fact one of the white paper from who says that by 2050 mm -hmm. probably the deaths because of AMR would be so high that it will be costing more than five trillion dollar to the whole economy Very true. only for treating the resistant infection. So I think this is high time that we wake up and uh, uh, the industry really looks at uh, this as a challenge and find newer solutions and keep upgrading it. Very true. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Thank you so much sir for your you. valuable suggestions and we hope to see you again on this conference. Thank you. Discussion. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.